we want, we rather for them to swing hard. And if they miss, miss hard. Because what if you hit it? <laughs> now you're out. <laughs> you understand? So encourage your hitters to not be afraid to miss, but swing it harder so that we can get them to understand that they can hit for power. Play games, play home under. I played home under with a bunch of nine-year-old girls, and they were actually going for home runs. Obviously, obviously you got to move home plate up to, like, right to the edge of the outfield grass. But it's fun to see how, see them go for it, go for it. Um, winning is about knowing how to manage your players. Um, you got to, because regardless of your talent, if you manage your players the right way, you will win. Because you're creating that atmosphere where they're going to go out and you're going to get their best every game. So I'm not saying you got to do what I did. I mean, I just did that because that's just how I, I just, I was doing an experiment. <laughs> but um, you got to, you got to find ways to win. Training is one part of it, but managing, and when we go into the mental game, well, I'm about to go into the mental game in five seconds. Uh, uh, getting players to be able to focus mentally and emotionally is a responsibility of us as a coach slash manager slash motivator slash leader. It's good leadership that wins, that helps players to understand how to win. And I think, I, I don't know about you, but I mean, I coach because I want to win. I mean, not just to coach because I feel like coaching. I want to go out and win. I don't, I don't like to lose. Do you hate to lose or do you love to win? That's my time. We're gonna we're gonna do mental skills in like three, three minutes. Yeah. I can I just loop it in and go right now. You guys want to take a little mental break? Nope. Little mental break. I had to get my outline for this one. <laughs> when I teach baseball coaches and baseball players, I call it the mental game. When I'm teaching softball coaches and softball players, I call it the emotional game. <laughs> That's the difference. It's really the same thing, but it's. Mental for baseball players, and it's emotional for softball players. And I think once we can understand that fact, we're going to be better at, at, at implementing it into what we're doing. Some people say that 80% or more of the game is mental or emotional. Right? However, and watch this now. The game 80% mental. Raise your hands if you spend. 90% of your practices on a mental game. 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 10. Can you see my point? The game's 80% mental, but we don't spend any time on, on working on that part of the game. So, but we always say, oh, it's, it's mental, you know, yeah, she, she's a mental midget, or whatever it is. <clears throat> However, we don't, we don't spend enough time on the mental game <laughs> to help them to develop a mental edge. So, let's talk about that. One of the things we have to be able to do as a coach is, is when we're teaching, is it's all about presentation. Whenever I'm working with a new group, and a lot of times I work with groups, I, I get to travel sometimes, and I have an opportunity to work with teams, who generally sometimes I have hitters who actually have other hitting coaches. We're going to be doing some things that that's just what they do because that's what they're currently learning. So you have to get to the point where you can make adjustments without making changes. It's like software on a, on a computer. I'm not changing your operating system. It's still Windows. It's still Mac OS X. But we're just going to take another software program and put it on, just put it on, the, on the operating system and you're going to run this software with whatever else, whatever other software you're running. If I put it in computer terms, I think some people might understand that. But we're not changing things, we're just saying, hey, let's add this to what you're currently doing without changing what you're really doing. So that's really what teaching to the player means. Teaching to the player is being able to say, because you're this type of hitter, or you're this type of player, this is how I want you to do it. And take another player and say, because you're this type of player, this type of hitter, I need you to do this. 
because every player is different. Especially when you start getting up higher and higher into the higher levels of softball. Players are different and you cannot be uh, one-minded or single-minded as a coach. You gotta be able to be versatile and that's the kind of player you gotta yell at in public. That's the kind of player you gotta yell at in the office. And that's the kind of player that you just can't yell at if you're a yeller. <laughs> so you, you know, and then, so you gotta be, it's, it's, it's really wisdom and managing their confidence. Because play, softball players play for the coach. We talked about this the other night, last night at dinner. Girls play for their coaches. They want, they want to please their coaches, their pleasers. They want, they want to know that they're doing, they're doing well. They, they want to be encouraged. They want, to, they want you to help them to build their confidence. You have to instill confidence in them. One of the first things that I learned when I came from baseball to softball is that I had to be positive no matter what. Even on a bad swing. I had to always be positive. Because if I was ever negative, they won't, the, 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 the athletes won't turn the page. They won't, they won't be able to move on as quickly as the boys would. The, the female athletes wouldn't be able to move on as quickly as the boys would. So I have to be positive. So, and I'm, I'm going to tell you how we teach in the positive right now. Here's how we do it. We teach in the positive. If you have a hitter who is taking a swim and they're sitting on their backside, Collapsing. There's two ways you can approach that. You can teach them the negative and tell them what they shouldn't do. Don't sit on your backside. Don't lean back when you hit. Those are all negative. Or you can teach them the positive and give them what they should do. So now you're teaching at the same time that you're kind of criticizing what you're not. So it's like, let's get off the backside and get the wing going forward a little bit. So you can say, don't sit on your backside or let's get our weight going forward a little bit. I said the same thing, except one's negative and one's positive. Everybody see how that works? It's like dirty dugout. Don't put the garbage on the floor. Don't put your Gatorade bottles on the, on the floor of the dugout. Negative. Or let's make sure we pick up the trash, put it in the garbage can. Positive. So that's the difference between teaching in the negative and teaching in the positive. Positive is affirming. Positive is giving them the, a, a correction. Positive is telling them what they should do. Negative is, this is what you shouldn't do. If I told everybody in the room, do not think about the purple elephant. Do not think about the purple elephant. Do not think about the purple elephant. What are you thinking about? Purple. Same thing when you teach them. Whatever you tell them not to do, so you have to tell them what to do. Especially when you want to, my thing is, I think softball players spend way too much time in their game. They play all year round. There's never a break. Every time you turn around, there's a tournament. There's a lesson. There's this, there's that, there's team practice, right? And they, they sacrifice their entire lives for this game. If you're going to do all that, you should at least have some success, right? Why do all that and still struggle? <laughs> and still not be a good player? You spend too much time on it. So therefore, we have to be able to get them to have, take what they're doing in practice into the game, because that's what it's about. If they can't take what they're doing in practice into the game, then I don't, I don't consider that to be success. I consider that to be like really a waste of time. We want them to have some success in the actual game, so they're not just having great practices, they're great practice players, but they're not really realizing any success in the game. Part of it is uh, the psychology of the third base coach. If you're the third base coach, how many people here coach third base? All right, I'm coming down the street right now. I'm coming down the street. If you watch championship third base coaches, 